Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Help me feed all my critters. We'll take you along to Jethro's graduation today. Come on, give little Debbie a kiss. <laughs> Ellie, ain't your pa and Jethro back from the jewelry store yet? Not yet, Granny. What all is Pa buying for Jethro? A four-bladed pocket knife and his first watch. <laughs> I wish I could graduate. And you can't graduate without going to school. <laughs> well, I don't like school. Well, then you can't get no watch and no pocket knife. Yonder they come. I know how I can get me a watch and pocket knife without going to school. How? I can take Jethro's away from him. <laughs> oh, no, you won't. You ain't gonna whoop Jethro on his graduation day. <laughs> Doing. He wants to make sure you notice his new watch. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Granny. Hi, Hi Jethro. Jethro. <coughs> what you got your sleeve rolled up for? Yeah, doggone, it is rolled up, ain't it? Oh, wee. Look at that new watch. Ain't it a dandy? Uncle Jed let me pick it out all by myself. We must have looked at two, three hundred watches for Jethro picked out. Well, let's see it, Jethro. Sure ticks nice and loud. Why, well, it's got the picture of a little man. <laughs> well, I'll be switched. A mouse wearing short pants and yellow gloves. He does something? In his hands tell the time. Ooh. By the way, yes, Rod, I ain't got my watch on me. Do you mind telling us the time? Oh, yes, sir. It's 2.98. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was reading the price sticker. <laughs> hey, you want the exact time, Uncle Jet? Yeah, I'd appreciate it. In seven seconds, it's going to be exactly two minutes before... No, it's four seconds. In four seconds, it's going to be exactly two minutes before... No, it's one second. In one second, it's going to be exactly two minutes before... Whoop. Went by. In a minute and seven seconds, it's going to be exactly... Uh, never mind the exact time. Just tell us the pertinent time. Pertinent, 12 o'clock. Thank you. Time to get Riddles cooking. Now, Ellie Mae, I want you to put your critters away and go out and help Granny. We don't want to be late for the graduation. Yes, sir, Pa. What time is it, Jethro? In 14 seconds, it's going to no, be exactly... No, no. What time is the graduation? Oh, 3 o'clock over at the music conservatory at Miss Potts School. Ain't it a shame that your ma can't be here today? Yeah, that is a shame. Pearl been right proud to see her boy graduating from the finest school in Beverly Hills. Jeff, how come you know to pick out the Potts School? We didn't. Jeff and me were just driving down the road, and that's the first schoolhouse we'd come to. It's a school, all right. Well, let's go in there and get you started. May I help you? Well, I uh, reckon maybe you can. Yes? What is it you wish? Well, I'd like to get my nephew started into school. Here? Yeah, here's all right if you've got room for a desk and his lunch basket. My dear man, this is a most exclusive private school. The tuition is quite expensive. Well beyond your means, I'm sure. Does that mean it costs a lot of money? That is precisely what it means. Well, I can pay you if it ain't over 25 million. 25 million? 
Yes, ma'am. That's all I got. Dollars? Yes, ma'am. In cash? Yes, ma'am. What is your name? Uh, Jed Clampett, ma'am, and this here's... And uh... you expect me to believe that you have $25 million? Well, no, not on me, ma'am, but uh, <laughs> my neighbor, Mr. Drysdale, he's keeping it in his bank for me. <laughs> Get me Melbourne Drysdale at the Commerce Bank. <laughs> It's funny how Miss Potts changed after she talked to Mr. Drydeal. It's been real nice to me ever since. I reckon that's because you're such a good scholar. Well, even scholars got to eat. Riddles will be ready in a half hour. In a half hour, it'll be exactly 23 seconds. <laughs> no, it'll be 20 seconds. 19. It'll be time to eat, and you'll be ready. Get through. Sit down a minute. Now, boy. I ain't much on speech making, but I just want you to know how proud you made every single one of us going to school and graduating like this. I reckon the power to think and reason things out is the greatest power there is in this world. And the more folks go to school and get the education, the better this world is going to be. That way they'll uh, get along better and understand each other and won't go to scrapping all the time. So you see, boy, the whole future of the world is riding on educated young folks like you. Hey, you know this is not Uncle Jed? While you was talking, this little old mouse's hand went from here clean down to there. <laughs> yes, sir. You will be careful with that new pocket knife, won't you? Oh, yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Good, good. <laughs> Own it good, boy. We want to look our best when we drive up to Miss Potts' school for your graduation. Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Hey, yonder comes Miss Jane. Boy, whether she sees my new watch. It's three or four times bigger than her. <laughs> so don't go to bragging on it right off. Let her notice it for herself. Oh, yes, sir. Greetings, Mr. Clavitt. And congratulations to you, young graduate. Thank you. Oh, is that a new watch? Oh, this one here. Yeah. <laughs> Shucks, no, it ain't exactly new. I've had it for pretty near uh, 37 minutes and 42 seconds now. <laughs> Come on in, Miss Jean. Thank you. Oh, just a moment. I have a present for Jethro. You hear that, boy? Yeah. To you who are about to graduate, Excelsior. Sure is heavy for Excelsior. <laughs> it is a book, dear boy. And always remember, books are the ever-burning lamps of accumulated wisdom. Read and illuminate your mind, because the mind, Jethro, the power to think and to reason, is the most important power that man possesses. Education is the answer to most of the ills of this world. And if young people are... Excuse me, Miss Jane, but I kind of think you're dropping your bucket down a dry well. <laughs> Jethro. Oh, in exactly 23 no, seconds. No, no, she means your graduation. It's 3 o'clock. In the music conservatory over to Miss Potts School. He's almighty proud of Jethro. He's the only one in the family that ever made it clean through school. <laughs> Mr. Clover, Jethro is graduating from the sixth grade, isn't he? That's right. Then he has to go through at least six more grades. Six more? <laughs> yes. Another 12 years, huh? <laughs> Well, w w with my help, I, I think he can make it in six. Then, of course, he'll go on to college. College? Gee whiz, all I want to be is a brain surgeon. <laughs> I think you'd better change that ambition, Jethro. To be a brain surgeon requires four years of college, four years of medical school, one year's internship, and from two to five years of residency. Oh, no. Uncle Jed, I just think I'll settle for being an atomic scientist. <laughs> that might take almost as long. Yes, Drew, you got a third choice? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Streetcar conductor. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll get it. Streetcar conductor? Oh, yes, sir. Good Clampett speaking. Oh, out of there, Miss Pot. Say, we's all mighty happy and proud that Jethro is graduating out of your school today. But I reckon you're right sad to see him go, ain't you? You don't say. Hello there, Miss Jane. Hello, Ellie. Will you stay to Vittles? Granny's cooked up an extra special treat for Jethro's graduation. Sure she will. What is it, Ellie? Chicken fried chicken hawk and crawl dad burgers. Oh, hey, come on, Miss Jane. Well, I don't, I don't really have the time. Oh, I can give you that. 
In 11 seconds, it'll be exactly 17 minutes before... Yes, sir? Miss Potts is right put out at you. You're late for graduation rehearsal. I am? Yeah, you're supposed to be over to school at half past 12. Oh, shucks, I forgot. Oh, Granny's got vittles ready now. Uh, Jethro, which is more important, eating or graduating? What? You're wrong. Get over to the school. <laughs> That's fine, Diana. All right, children. We're going to try it again now, and this time, please keep in tempo. All right, Diana. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Just throw. I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Potts. Hey, fellas, take a look at my new watch. Oh, boys, 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 come now, boys. Jethro, this is supposed to be a dress rehearsal. Didn't you get a graduation suit? Well, yes, ma'am, I sure did. Uncle Jed let me go clean into Los Angeles all by myself and pick it out. Well, I hope you remembered to get a dark suit. Oh, yes, ma'am. It's dark green. <laughs> it was big yellow squares all over. <laughs> And I got some yellow shoes to go with it. And the fella threw in a necktie for free. It's got the picture of a hula dancer on it. <laughs> Lights go out, she glows. And there's writing on it that lights up and says, Kiss me in the dark, baby. <laughs> Diana, please. Shall I get you some smelling salts? Yes. And Milburn Drysdale. Tell him to come quickly. It's an emergency. <laughs> hey, guys, you ought to see this store where I bought my suit. There's a fellow there that stands behind this little wire fence that sells everything there is. Cameras, clothes, Wait, guitars, watches, oh, ties, oh, shoes, oh, hats, everything. Back in your places. Graduation is only two hours away. Oh, an hour and 59 minutes and 34 seconds. 33 seconds, 32 seconds, 31 seconds. Yes, no. You want to see it here? Yes, no, please. Now then, boys, certain ones of you will be performing specialties during the exercises. Will those boys please step forward? You, Jethro? Oh, yes, ma'am. I thought for my special exercises, I'd do this 50 times. No! 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 <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, I fully realize that you hold the mortgage on my school and that the Clampets are very special friends of yours. And my largest depositors. Yes. But under no circumstances can I allow Jethro to participate in the graduation exercises. Um, ceremonies. Why not? <laughs> because he'll make a shambles of them. In the first place, he towers over the other children. Well, you knew that two years ago when you enrolled him. No, I didn't. I swear it. When Mr. Clampett and Jethro were in my office that day, I thought they were talking about somebody else, a tiny little boy. I still say let Jethro graduate with the other boys. I can't afford to antagonize the Clampets, and you can't afford to antagonize me. But the <laughs> reputation of my school is involved. Forget it. There is something else that's involved. I don't want to hear about it. It's money. Tell me about it. <laughs> Our certificates today are going to be presented by Mr. Theodore Switzer. The philanthropist, the multimillionaire. Correct. And if he is favorably impressed, he may endow my school with a very large sum of money. Mm. Well, I'll have a talk with Jethro. I'll see that he wears a nice suit. He says, thank you, he'll be fine. Jethro, would you come out here, please? Be right there. Ow! Put me down, Jethro. I just want to show Mr. Drysdale my graduation exercise. Put her down, Jethro. No. Jethro, when Mr. Switzer presents you with your certificate today, he may ask you a few questions, such as, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, that is, mature. Yes. What do you want to be, Jethro? A streetcar conductor. <laughs> streetcar conductor. Yes, sir. I seen one over to Joplin once. He had a little gadget right here. He could squirt nickels, dimes, and quarters out of that thing faster than milk from a tall cow. <laughs> oh, uh, get her come back from the rehearsal yet? Well, not yet, Pop. Hey, Skipper. Look at your handsome paw. <laughs> sure hope it's his foot you're talking about. I'm talking about you. Why, you're dooted up like a preach on Sunday. 
Smell like a barbershop on Saturday. Well, Ellie, I kind of think it's beholden on us to do just real proud at his graduation. Hey, Paul, can I have some of that thirst lickum smelling that you got on your hair? Oh, it ain't for girls, Ellie. Well, I want it for Skipper. He wants to look nice for graduation, too. Where are you going, boy? I'm gonna get something to eat. Fellas gotta keep up his strength doing the kind of graduation exercises I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Granny, Jethro's heading for the kitchen. He's starving. I heard him coming. That's why I cleared out. When that boy starts swinging a knife and fork, he ain't safe to be around. I just hope he don't set fire to the kitchen with the sparks. Come on, Skip. Why, this man must be one of them heartbreaking movie stars. Could I have your autograph, Mr. Fairbanks? Cut that out. I figured I ought to get curried and combed a mite extra for Jethro's graduation. You mean Miss Potts. Miss Potts? Oh, come now, Jim. That city school teacher always had had an eye out for you. That's plumb ridiculous. Why would a fine, educated city woman like Miss Potts take a second look at me? I'll tell you why. You're as handsome as a new buggy, and you're rolling in dough like a baker's knuckles. That's plumb ridiculous. That woman don't even know I'm alive. <laughs> All right, now let's run over this quickly. Diana, you will get Jethro's watch and set it back 45 minutes. Mrs. Potts, you will do the same with Mr. Clampett's watch. Well, that's a simple matter for Diana, but how am I going to get Mr. Clampett's watch? You're a woman, he's a man, take it from there. Or would you rather have Mr. Switzer judge your school by Jethro? I'll do it, I'll do it. I need that endowment. Mrs. Potts, isn't this going to be quite a blow to Jethro, missing his graduation? He won't miss it, dear. As soon as Mr. Switzer has gone, we will have a special ceremony just for Jethro. Well, howdy, folks. Come in, come in. Granny, uh, you remember Millicent Schuyler Potts and her assistant, Miss Davis? I sure oh, do. Indeed. Well, Miss Davis has a few things to go over with Jethro. Well, he's out in the kitchen having vittles. May I take her out? Oh, I reckon it's safe. The edge ought to be off his appetite now. <laughs> <laughs> well, where is Mr. Clampett? Ah, oh, you'd like to see him, would you, Miss Potts? Indeed I would. Oh, Dad! That woman that don't know you're alive is here to see you. <laughs> oh, hi there, Miss Potts. Hello, Mr. Clampett. I didn't figure we'd be seeing you too long, about 3 o'clock when Jethro graduates. Oh, uh, oh, Mr. Clampett, then you are coming. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was so worried. You didn't RSVP. I didn't? No. <laughs> and that's why I'm here, to extend to you a very special invitation and to make sure that you get there exactly at the right time. Oh, we'll be on time, all right. You promise? Yes, ma'am. Oh, and you won't be late? No, oh, ma'am. Oh, thank you, thank you. Granny, ain't there something cooking out in the kitchen? Not as good as what's cooking in here. <laughs> uh, ma'am, uh, do you mind squeezing this other hand? Nothing's got my watch in it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I hurt you? Well, no, ma'am. Oh, there, make it better. Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, hadn't you ought to be looking after Jethro? He ain't the one that needs looking after. Uh, here's your watch, Mr. Clampett. My, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Well, how are things going in here? Oh, fine, just fine. Jethro, you hurry up and get into your graduation suit. Yeah, it must be, uh, quarter to two. Oh, it must be later than that. What time you got, Jethro? Oh, I got... Uh, Miss Diane, hey, can I have my watch back now? Certainly, Jethro. Thank you. Hey, in 14 seconds, it'll be exactly 15 minutes before two. Make that 11. Make that 10. That's close enough, Jethro. What time you got, Mr. Drydew? Same as everybody else, quarter to two. <laughs> Diana, we must get back to school. Mr. Drysdale, may we impose on you? My pleasure. Oh, well, now we'll see all of you at three o'clock sharp. Yes, I'll come back and pick you up at a quarter of three. That's one hour from now. Oh, no need to. Just will drive us over in the truck. Not on his graduation day. Let me have the honor. See you later, Jethro. <laughs> Yeah, 
true. I think Miss Diane is kind of sweet on you. Well, I thought so, too, at first. Then I found out she just liked me from a watch. <laughs> oh, hey, Uncle Jed. Look at Skipper. Get through? You see if you can get yourself looking as neat as he is. <laughs> Skipper go with us his graduation, too, Pa? Well, yeah, let's go outside and ask Miss Potts. Maybe she ain't gone yet. Come on, Skip. There's only one way to tell time, and that's with the sun. <laughs> Miss Potts go? Yes. And you know something? According to my calculations, it's done past 2.30. Granny, you can't hardly put your calculations up against three store-bought watches. <laughs> Where are you going, Granny? To Potts School. Let them with watches be late. I'm going to be on time. Well, can Skipper and me go, too? Time on. <laughs> Little woman's gonna be more than 45 minutes early. It's just a small school, Mr. Switzer, but Mrs. Potts believes in quality, not quantity. That's very commendable. Well, it's been a pleasure making your acquaintance. I've long been an admirer of your money. Uh, many charities and philanthropies. Well, Gordiamas Igatur. <laughs> Well, your graduating class has a very impressive scholastic average, Mrs. Potts. Thank you, Mr. Switzer. With the exception of this one student, Jethro Bodine. Uh, Jethro, yes. Well, I doubt very much if he'll be here today. He's graduating, isn't he? Oh, yes, yes, he's graduating. Excuse us, fellas. Is this here where you go to watch a graduation? No, ma'am. You have to go around front. There wasn't no place to park out front. Hey, isn't that Skipper? The one that Jethro's always talking about? Why, sure is. <laughs> Where's Jethro? We're supposed to march out in about one minute. Yeah, it's three o'clock now. I knew it, Ellie Mae. Jethro's gonna miss his own graduation. I've got a great idea. Let Skipper march out and get Jethro a certificate. <laughs> you reckon it's all right, Granny? It's all right with me. Mrs. Potts, I don't mean to pry. But if I'm to endow this school with a large sum of money, I have a right to know about Jethro. Yes. Well, you see, Mr. Switzer, Jethro has a very definite inferiority complex. He doesn't like to appear in front of an audience. Why does he feel inferior? Well, well he's different from the other boys. Different how? Oh, uh, his appearance, his size, his background, his manners. <laughs> Even the food he eats. <laughs> Why did you enroll him? Uh, frankly, it was a mistake. But once enrolled, I felt duty-bound to give him the best education I knew how. Actually, Mrs. Potts has accomplished miracles with Jethro. Uh, from the looks of his grades, I'd hardly agree. Mr. Switzer, I give you my word. Jethro posed a most unusual academic challenge. <laughs> well, it's after three. I suppose we should proceed without him. Oh, thank you, Mr. Switzer. Diana, begin the march. Will you... Uh... <laughs> Mrs. Potts, you're entirely too modest. Academic challenge, indeed. Why, it's a miracle that he can make these kind of grades. I'm doubling my endowment. <laughs> now, if you could just rid him of that inferiority complex. I'll work on it. <laughs> It's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. 
You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.